Mata. the weekend edition of the game here on GH1. It's on every Saturday at 12 noon. And thanks a lot for choosing to make a date with us. Um, coming up in this edition, certain issues just will not go our way. Well, by close of day yesterday, we knew that the rebels and the delinquents had agreed to come back to play for the Black Stars, or so at least make themselves available for selection by coach Kwesi Apia. And it's been a big issue. It's dominated the airwaves. Is dominated all the TV stations. The question I'm asking you today is one for your reactions to the availability now of Kevin Prince Boateng, Dede Ayu, Jordan Ayu, and Suleiman Tai, whose issue was more of a disciplinary problem. The question I'm asking is should these players line up for the Black Stars against Zambia on the 6th of um, September, which is barely two weeks away, when Ghana takes on Zambia in the final group game? for the right to qualify to play in the playoffs. The question I'm asking you is, yes, they are available, but should the coach line up all four against the Zambians in that game at the Kumasi Stadium? Well, I'd like to hear what you think. Via Twitter, our Twitter handle is at Sami Bartels. At Sami Bartels, that's our Twitter handle. And then on Facebook is GH1 Entertainment. And then I'm also going to give you the opportunity, because we've heard so-called experts speak. We've heard journalists express their opinion. I'd like to hear what the Ghanaian football fans think. So before I go for my first break, the number is 0233 717144. 0233717144. 0233717144. If you can't post a comment on Facebook or go to Twitter, call me in the next few seconds and then I'll talk to you about the Black Stars issue. We want to start the program by hearing what you think. Today it's not about what I think or what my panelists might think. I'm very interested in finding out what the Ghanaian football fan thinks. Do you think they should line up against Zambia in September? Call now, and after the break, I'll be talking to you here on GH1 on the game. And afterwards, as usual, I will go to the English Premiership. Rob Stockton will join me. Park Arthur is also here already, and we'll look at the fixtures coming up in week two of the 2013-2014 edition of the Premiership. We'll take a look at all the other leagues, some results already in from last night's games. Plus, at the tail end, I have um, an interesting interview with a very interesting person. Lots of Ghanaians will remember him on the boxing scene. He calls himself Simon McIntosh, Peter Simon McIntosh. He will join me in the studio as we talk about his boxing career here in Ghana. He's now retired. And his assessment of the standard of boxing 80s, 90s, and the current generation, and what his thoughts are about that. So you don't want to miss a single minute of this show. This is the game on GH1. I'm going for my first break. When I come back, I'll be conversing with you about the return of the four and whether they should line up against Zambia on the 6th of September. This is the game. Stay tuned. My name is Sami Kofo. I watch the game on GH1, so keep on watching. Welcome again. This is the game here on GH1. And the question I'm asking you is, yes, the four have returned Suleiman Tari for this my reasons. Remember, the coach said that until Suleiman Tari apologized, he wasn't going to call him for a Black Stars game. Well, he has apologized finally. The DRU and his brother had written to withdraw their services from the Black Stars. And they were asked that if you want to return, then you have to write formally. They have also done so. Kevin Prince Boateng has done so as well. Reactions have been mixed. Question I'm asking is what is your reaction and should they line up in about two weeks' time when Ghana takes on Zambia in that final group game at the Kumasi Sports Stadium, the Babaya Sports Stadium? Should they line up? Should Kwesi Apia, who is the coach of the national team, the Black Stars, line up? And I'm asking you to share your opinions. Call me now, 0233-717144. The number is 0233-717144. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. And you can also go to Twitter. My handle is at Sami Bartels. Tweet me or you can go to our Facebook page, GH1 Entertainment, 
and also post your comments and we'll know what to do. I have my first caller. Before I go to that first caller, let me introduce Paco Arthur. He's a regular panelist here mm. on the Saturday show. Rob will be joining me a bit later when we look at the Premier League. He's my resident Premier League expert. Thanks for joining us, Rob. No problem. And I'll be coming back to the phone lines in just a moment. But here's what I did. We've been checking, monitoring the reaction in Zambia to the coming of the players. I went to one of their most popular websites. It's called zambianfootball.co.zm. And there were interesting comments. And it shows mixed reactions among the Zambians who are coming to play us. Um, one person's comment says that it's good for Ghana, although Zambia is not afraid of any team or player in the world. And another says that on a serious note, if we want to play Ghana, we should be ready to play the real Ghanaians with KPB and our you brothers. So he fears for Zambia now that these players are coming. question I'm asking you is, should the coach fail them when Ghana plays against Zambia on the 6th of September? The number is 0233-717144. And another says that the tougher they come, the easier they will fall. So he believes it doesn't matter. The Zambians are still coming to win. And this is a more reflective uh, message that was posted on the Zambian website. It says, if Ghana allows the rebel players, it will just complicate things for themselves. How can you accept a player who discarded you for so long, especially when you've needed them in the times of difficulties? Now, when Ghana is on the verge of qualification, they decide to come back knowing very well that the World Cup is just around the corner. On the other hand, players who gave it their all during the qualification might end up being benched and drawn from the squad and to give places to these so-called returning big players. So this is a Zambian. Somebody will say it's none of your business. But this is what some of the comments. And someone says that Zambia is in for a real hiding and humiliation in Ghana. This is coming from a Zambian football fan. People wishing to w travel to West Africa should be ready for some real bullying. So already some Zambians are throwing in the towel because of the return of these players. This one says, our defenders will have a torry time in handling this guy, referring to Kevin Prince Watton. He can be a real handful on his day. Truth be told, that game in Kumasi is a dead robber. And he says that the best Zambia can hope for is a draw in this game. And please, my producer tells me that some of you call in with your TV sets tuned up in terms of volume. Please tune down the volume on your set before you call so we don't get feedback. Because I have a number of callers, but we've had to ask you to call back. Hello. Um, who do I have on the line? Hello, my name is Ezra and I'm calling from Ampobi. Okay, What's your, what are your thoughts? So, the four have come first. What is your reaction to the fact that they have returned, or at least they've declared their availability to play for the Black Stars? I'm, I'm, very, happy that, I'm very happy that they've come back, especially with the IU brothers. Hmm. They should be given the chance if the coach sees them fit enough to play. But with Kevin, that guy left us when we really needed him. And right now, what he's doing is very disrespectful. He, he has disrespected the whole nation. He's now coming back. And we are all accept the coach should not even look at him. They, we should not give him the chance at all. We, we should let him go. We should let him go. But the IU brothers, they were here during the qualifiers and all. Just that some things did not work out. But with Kevin, nah. Okay, thank you very much. So he, he believes that the same rule, we should not paint them with the same brush. We should treat the IUs differently. This is why I bring in Paco after Paco. So that's what the first caller says. And you can also express your opinion. I'm starting with this subject. I don't want to talk too much on the show today. I want to hear what Ghanaians think. The number is 0233 0233-717144. 0233-717144. I mean, generally, I think that the feeling is a good feeling. I mean, we, we are all happy to see, um, uh, I mean, these four lads back three uh, for, for, for similar reasons and then still for disciplinary reasons. I mean, you, you would argue that these form part of our better players. I mean, um, a, a national team squad uh, consists of your best players all over the globe. And okay. let, me, let me pick this call. Hello, good afternoon. What's your name and where are you calling from? Please, I'm calling from Sango 4. Okay, what's your name? Uh, my name is Promise Oyaki. So what are your thoughts on the matter? Should they play on the sixth when we play Zambia? Uh, please, I, I always expected the four players to play. But the only thing that is stepping now is Kevin. Abe, 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 Abe should come for the four, please. Okay, so. Yes, you, please. Okay, cool. Well, yes, he has not been exiled. Thank you. It's just the coach's decision not to call him um, um, Abe, that is Quincy, also Abe. Yeah, he's talking about him. But this point that has been made, that, and you get the impression there's a lot of vitriol when it comes to Kevin Prince Boatin. Some people really don't want to see him back. And you see, I would, I would, I would leave the blame in the sh in the steps of the GFA, in, 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 uh, particularly with the Kelvin 
what is issue. I, I think that Jeff has done well in, in managing the Black Stars. I mean, uh, as a priceless um, asset we have as a nation, Black Stars kindly have been managed quite well. But you feel that if um, GFE sees the need to hire uh, publicist, uh, PR personnel to help boost a good image, build good perceptions about the GFE and its working, then some of the issues and how they handled the KP issue was terrible. Which aspect of the KP issue? Well, like he said, he, would, he didn't want to play. And that's what it was, right? But we um, we have we have had uh, accusations from some quarters of the GFE where we have had heard that he chooses and selects games. But I saw KP right after the World Cup. Our first qualifier was in Swaziland, and KP was there. We, we won by four goals to nil. He was our best player on the day. He put in all the effort. So that is he went. And then he says his health it means he Be can't combine playing club football and international. Football. And then issues happen. So it's, okay, it's, I mean, just hold on. Let me pick another call. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Yeah. What's your name, sir? Hello. Yeah. Hello. You are on GH1. This is the game. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear us? You're on there. Yeah, I can hear you right. Okay, so what are your thoughts on the matter? Yeah, I'll be very grateful if all the players are line up uh, against uh, Zambia Matri. That, that's nice. Because for Kevin to because the guy is good, all right. We all right, he's doing well. Talk of Sula Ali Muntari, the guy and his brother, all good. The best lead uh, from the coach is just to call these four guys so they'll come and do those for us, and that's all. Okay, thank you very you much. Know. That's his opinion. Let me hear what you also think. Is 0233717144. On Twitter, this is from um, the Erudite on Twitter. That's his handle. He says, these players are experienced. I think we should play them against Zambia. Eric Yaboa says that they are not worthy of that. They must be benched. They don't add any value to the team. But we need Sule Montari, he says. There's a call on the line. Hello, good afternoon, sir. What's your name and why are you calling from? Hello? Hello, caller. Well, he's not on the line. On Twitter, Mali K says that Kevin is the best all-round midfielder Ghana has. His personality can be questioned, but he's devoted and he will give Ghana 100%. It's true, Sami, it's true. I mean, when he's on the field of play, do we have reasons to question his, his 90 minutes game, game attitude? Do we have reasons to question his input and what he does for the day? I mean, over the 11 games and one goal he scored for the Black Stars, it's been nothing but very uh, 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 good performances. Perhaps, uh, except the Kumasi game that we have singled out and vilified him so hard. I, it is good to have some of these players back. And I think that, like I've said on, on the point of the GSA, it, it, it is good that these guys have come. And GSA Hello. have lessons mm. there too. Let me go to the phone line. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from, sir? Okay, my name is Samuel and I'm calling from Kaswa. Okay, what's, what, what, what's your opinion? Okay, my opinion is for the, the DIU, they should be allowed to play the match. And for the Kevin Prince Brown team, must be bent. And I really need to play with that in the match, honestly. Okay, thank you very much. So, it seems most people are quite okay with Sule. I mean, it was just a disciplinary issue. He wants to leave. But again, Kevin. Sami, so, mean, like, uh, I would still want to build the argument. Critics, out, out. critics have said that what you exhibit off the pitch has as much influence on your game on the pitch as what you do on the pitch. Simple, and that simple. if you come and it's just about playing and there's no relationship whatsoever and there doesn't appear to be any affinity whatsoever for the team you are playing or any affection whatsoever, it's a big deal. Sami, we have known these players to be professionals. How to be? And Marco, just uh, again, let me cut in and take the caller's opinion. Hello, what, what's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? My name is Kobe. Kobe, where are you calling, calling from? Accra. Your reaction to the return of the four players and whether you think, particularly those who went on international retirement, should be played when we play against Zambia on the 6th of September? Oh, yes, the three players should play, but only Kelvin, because he disrespects the DFA, he disrespects Guineas, and all sorts of things. So, shouldn't allow Kelvin to play. That's only my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Bako. And like I'm saying, so that with the, with the, with the, with the issue of 
um, players coming to play and giving this. I mean, these are professionals. They play football wherever they are. So, I mean, let's not deceive ourselves to thinking that um, they, these people don't understand team spirit, they don't understand the need to build cordial. They do because they do it wherever they are. So when they come here, we expect them to do the same. Are they doing that? I think so. I think they are doing that so that when issues, mm -hmm. um, little issues come up, I think that GFP must manage them well. Well, well this thing about complicating matters for the squad. Okay, so but assuming the coach picks them to play on the sixth against Zambia. We played qualifiers with a certain set of players, the last round of qualifiers. They've won matches. Mm. They've gone away. They've won matches. Now, these four, these three, because Sule was already in the team, walk back into the team, and others are benched for them. Sami, so, I, um, I, I don't recall any time where there has been a certain template where we need to look at in selecting 22 players. So that 22 um, okay. Black Star players for so, different tournaments this have This is changed. the only goal to date that Kevin scored for Ghana. Yeah. This was at the World Cup against the United States of America. At this stage, Ghanaians were head over heels in we're love, love with Kevin him. He was, a, he was, he was then, a Ghanaian then. He was but a lot has changed since. A lot has changed. And it's but not the doing of the fans who are saying Kevin should not be called back. It's, well, it's, it's what they are doing. It's not. What has Kelvin really done? Kelvin um, committed sticks to the Black Stars. And for him, it was becoming um, um, strenuous on his health. He gave reasons why he couldn't continue uh, um, applying the very difficult um, journeys. They may not be genuine. They may not be justifiable. But do we need Kelvin? Will Kelvin be useful to us? Will he, will, he, will he add to our blast? I think these are the salient points. And every Ghanaian in his heart knows that Kelvin is such an asset. We saw him at the last World Cup. But for Kelvin, would we have gone the, um, uh, as far as we did? No, we didn't have... And up to today, we don't have any midfield uh, enforcer, um, the, the, the kind of game that ACN used to give us. And Kelvin has taken over smoothly. Why would we want to discard him? If he's German, he's gone through good training, and if he decides to play for Ghana, we should be happy. Well, so <laughs> issues coming. Uh, let me just read a few more of your Twitter messages. Hello. And if you call, please lower the volume on your TV set when you call. Hello, good, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Dr. Okay, what's on your mind? I don't understand why some fans are uh, uh, debunking the coming back of Kelvin to Zwarte. Like, uh, like the gentleman on the studio, as you said, when the guy was decision not to come, he gave several reasons uh, 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 why, why he's not going to play for Ghana again. In fact, players did that, and now they are, players did that, and then they came back to play for Ghana. Just like uh, 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 the dear and the brother. They all said that they were not going to play for Ghana again. Now they are coming back. Like what uh, Kevin is watching. That guy is very good. Perfect. Please, I'll be very grateful that you give him a chance to come and play uh, for Ghana again. He has no problem. See the office of my Kelechi and to the best of my understanding, Kevin is what he should be there. The, the, the for my okay, thank so you thank you very much for your call. That is Kevin blowing kisses to Ghanaians, I'm sure. Well, he's available for selection now. Ghanaians are split in their opinion over whether he should come. He went down in history as the youngest international player to go on retirement. Previously, it was Ben Schuster when he was 24 years for West Germany when he decided he didn't want to play national team football anymore. And Kevin, well, broke that record at the age of 23 when he decided he was quitting football at international level for good. Some believe it was Ghana's moment of need, and he let Ghanaians down. And now he sees there's a big, up, there's a big platform in the offense, Brazil 2014. So he's picked his return, and he wants to come back. Was, that, it, that, was it different from the 2010 scenario, Sammy? I mean, 2010 scenario where we're going to a World Cup, needed to beef up our team. Kelvin was not part of that uh, qualifying setup. He didn't, the, the first game he actually um, participated in was against Holland, that 3-1. Mullen. That was the first time Ghanaians had ever seen Kelvin mm. play. And he went to the World Cup. He did it for us. So is it different from the situation now? I'm thinking perhaps, yes, it is different, but it's very similar. He, 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 he did not partake in the, in the, in the qualifiers, but we, I think that we need a, a, enforcement. If we had the best um, midfielders in the world and Kelvin perhaps w was not needed, then perhaps we could have uh, overlooked him. But now, as it stands now, we have not done much in his absence. And so his absence is eminent. We need him, including um, the DIU. And, okay. and, and I'll pick a couple more calls and we'll let these issues rest, and then we'll go and talk about the other football issues for the weekend. Um, I have a caller. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Hi. Thank you for joining the game. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Jean Paul. I'm calling from St. Road, Papa. Okay. You're welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, my mind is that. Uh, I wish Kosia Pia should allow the guys to come back, but I didn't, I'm not sure whether they would deserve uh, the starting 11. But 
we are Ghanaians, we are begging contractors to call them back to the game. Okay. Begging. Okay. So I hear you. Thank you. Thanks very much for your call. So, um, Final words and then <laughs> some final words, but I, 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 I want to take it from where the last caller ended. The issue about Kusiapia in, in this whole mix. Kusiapia is the, is, the is the coach of the Black Stars, and as much as possible, he should be dispassionate about this thing. He should he shouldn't attach too much emotions to it. These players are not as schooled and as learned as the Kusinian teachers mm -hmm. and co. Cool. These are I mean these are and, and they will come with their faults. But as a coach, you need to help help them manage them as much as possible, get the best out of them. And if Kusiapia does that, I, I think that it shouldn't be a problem having these four uh, uh, coming back. Whether or not they will play is his choice. But is he, Kusiapia has proven that he understands the game to some extent. But he should also build his, uh, his charisma. These are egoistic lads. You need to also pretend some amount of ego to be able to stand up to them, to handle them, something, and even to shout uh, at them. I mean, and he should rehearse it. Shout at Sule, shout at Kelvin, and some of these things will come naturally. But well, there are those who say that excellent players, I say you don't need 11 excellent players to qualify for the World Cup. We've seen the prelude to the 2010 World Cup where most Ghanaians compared the 2010 team to the, 20, the 06 team and said this team will not get anywhere and they ended up getting to the quarterfinal stage. But ultimately, it's the coach who makes the call and makes the decisions as to who plays and who does not. So over to you, Coach James Kwesi Apia and the team that you select to play against Zambia. Meanwhile, the Zambians are playing today against Zimbabwe. It's a final qualifier for the... Um, Chan competition, which is the competition for local players. But we have an eye on that game because the, some of the Zambian players will be playing there, locally based players, will be playing for the national team when they play against Ghana. You want to say something before we go? And Samia, I think that um, Kusiapia must, must also devote himself from any form of influence. The reasons he gave for dropping Jordan was not good enough. He says, uh, footballing reasons. It's one and thing when a player plays well for the club, and it's another when you're managing the player. I felt that he had every right to dro uh, drop him, especially when a oh, player... Yeah. If, when you have a problem... Is, you need to cite... You, you, no, you're when, you, when you have it. a problem, when we saw the Malawi game, when yeah. positionally he was indisciplined, he, he couldn't stick to instructions, was doing the exercise. So tell us... And if you feel that's the point, why should that be a challenge? You. Sammy, I, li I, li I like that. So that you come out and uh, make it clear, I am not playing Kelvin and so in this game for so and so... Well, maybe verbosity is not one of his, yeah. his strong not points. But let me read a few more of your Twitter comments and then we'll go for a break and come back and talk the English Premiership. Rob is burning. He wants to speak. Um, I think the players should be allowed to play because we need to win, but the FA should be blamed as well. This is coming from Ice Kid, a Booker Jr. on Twitter. I don't know why you say the FA has to be blamed. Seram Suarez says that, yes, we need quality to face the Zambians. I'd love to see Kevin, Dede, um, Koja Samoa, Rabiu, and Montari in midfield. Ice Kid again says, I think the players should be allowed to play because we need to win. Uh, Jolali Yebua says that Kevin should play. He's one of the best midfielders we've got. Mauli K says that, have you noticed the relationship between Kevin and Montari? Well, yes, we, we have noticed that relationship. He says he's not sure it's an AC Milan relationship necessarily. He thinks it goes deeper. And this is from Osei Kufo, who says that we don't need those boys anymore because we can make it without them. So some very angry outbursts from some of you at Aigbe. Sedem on Twitter says that it's inevitable the return of the delinquents will complicate selections. Nevertheless, they add more depth and quality to the squad. Those are your thoughts, and thank you very much for those who called. If you weren't able to call, please post on our Facebook page, GH1 Entertainment, or tweet me at Sami Bartels, and I'll read it as we go through the program. When we come back, we go to Europe to look at the various leagues and take note that in a few weeks' time, the Ghana Premier League will be starting as well, so have an eye on that. And then we'll talk to um, Simon Peter McIntosh, that famous Nigerian boxer who, for most of his career, fought here in Ghana. And then I have the winner of the freestyle football competition. Remember, we previewed it before it took place on the 16th of this month. Well, the winner will join me as we talk about how he will fare at the world competition. This is a game on GH1. I'm going for my second break. When I come back, the show continues. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is the game here on GH1. Thank you very much for those calls in the Black Stars. Let's keep the conversation going. On Twitter, my handle is at Sami Battles. On Facebook, uh, Facebook page is GH1 Entertainment, and you can post your comments. Now, from Ghana football, which is a conversation that never ends, and watch out in the next two weeks. We'll have exclusive build-ups to that Ghana game here on the game on both our Monday night show 
and our Saturday shows. But let's talk about the European Games coming up this weekend. Rob has joined me. Hi, Rob. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, how's it staying, Ghana? Yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. It's Thank going. You much, yeah. You've been on the lookout for the matches, and the, the yeah. first game that's been going on yeah, is. Uh, um, yeah, the Fulham versus Arsenal game at the early kickoff. Uh, Arsenal are tuning up at halftime. Uh, Giroud and Podolski both scoring. Things are turning around for us yeah, now, huh? Yeah, first the Fenerbahce game, and now, now this game. Around. Do you think people will suddenly forget about the criticism a week ago when, when Wenger lost against them? Aston Villa, everybody says crisis, 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 buy players, buy players, buy players. Has anything changed? I, I don't think it has in, the, in terms of signing players. I think they do need to bring in players. I, I don't think if they, if they don't bring in any at all, I think the fans are still going to be on their back, still you know, say it's a crisis and stuff. But I think if they lost the Fenerbahce game, I think Wenger will be in a, a really tough decision. But luckily they won that. And I'm winning this game, so hopefully things are back on track. So if you are not following the game, it's 2 0 for Arsenal. Giroud and Podosi have scored to put them up against Fulham. We're expecting better from Fulham. Fulham were hoping to follow up last week's win over Sutherland on the opening game. And that would have been only the second time that Fulham are starting the season with two wins. And so these are the fixtures coming up for the rest of the weekend in England. Quite interesting games. The big game, though, is on Monday, which a lot of people are looking forward to. So Fulham Arsenal, that's already 2-0 to Arsenal. Everton are going to play against West Bromwich Albion. Hull City will take on Norwich. Sorry, Hull City Tigers. That's how they call themselves now. And Southampton will take on Sutherland, who lost their first game. Stoke will play against Crystal Palace. And Aston Villa will take on Liverpool. Those are the matches coming up this weekend. And tomorrow, Cardiff City takes on Manchester City. Tottenham Hotspurs will come up against Swansea City. That would be a sweet game. Both teams have reinforced their ranks. And then on, on, on Monday, it's going to be Manchester United against Chelsea. So let's just have um, an overview of the games that will be taking place. First, the Arsenal game. It's 2-0 already to them. It's, it's encouraging for Arsenal. I'm, uh, I'm particularly happy for Arsenal because, um, one, they are, they are aggressive in the market, seeking to end the window very well get some uh, influx. I, I hear they are in top for Di Maria. If Bale should move to um, Madrid, then it's very eminent that Di Maria might join the Arsenal fold and, 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 and a few others. So for me, that's You believe Arsenal when they start being linked with players? I, I, well, <laughs> it doesn't always get through, but last season they got Podolski, they got uh, Kazula, they got Oliver Giroud at the tail end. Yeah, Winger likes end. to do the uh, last minute business, so yeah. I, I, usually uh, it's more profitable. So I look forward to that and it's encouraging. The two zero. And you see, um, Arsenal fans must demand more from Winger this season because if it's just about waiting to um, um, getting the wins. Uh, Asna can always get those wins because Wenger understands in, uh, how to win these games. I mean, he, he plays the chess well. He, he picks one win, draws one, loses one. When you're angry at him, he wins the next game. When you are... Uh, so then I think that uh, the fans should be more co uh, consistent and persistent with their demands on Wenger. Well, that's what it is. Over the weekend, everybody will be looking at that Monday night game, though, between Manchester United and Chelsea. Chelsea won their second game during the week, but they laboured against Aston Villa. Mm, it's the first big test for Moyes, I reckon, to be honest. It's the first, you know, big building block that he's got to do. It's the first big game of the season. If he wins that, I think the fans will, you know, be happy. The question but, is, yeah. can he win that against Mourinho? I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I personally probably back Chelsea. I think they started the season very well, I mean, winning the first two games. So, yeah. And the team that gave Chelsea so much trouble was Aston Villa. They've been quite impressive. Very impressive. Benteke. Benteke last season ended the season very well, started off very well this season. I'm particularly happy for him if he continues this, this way next season. He will be on his way to a, a very big a very And big they club. play a team that also needs a good start to, to reinforce some confidence. Liverpool. Liverpool. Liverpool did well last week. 1-0 without Suarez. Storage continue and, and co continue from where they left off. Mm. You, th you think that uh, Roja is getting them to play more football and uh, out of it, I'm sure he's going to get results. And this week has been dominated not by the build-up to the fixtures, but so much more about the transfers. We knew, we knew that Willian was in talks to go to Tottenham. Now, in the last 48 hours, now Tottenham have accused Chelsea of hijacking <laughs> the move because Mourinho has declared that they are in talks for £32 million. Mm. Now, do you feel it's unfair on <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur? I think it's a very weird signing for Chelsea. They don't really need another player in that position. They've got plenty of players in midfield and stuff. I think uh, for Tottenham, it'd be a great, great signing. But for Chelsea, I, d I can't understand where that's coming from. Well, well it's to take the, the, uh, I mean, the best away from the best. They seem to have yeah. a cluttered yeah. midfield already. I mean, Mata is but William, sitting William, out. William is coming as a forward. 
I mean, for, for Anzi, he plays on top of Samoleto. So, um, he, uh, I, I, I'm sure they're looking at... Uh, is he the world-class forward they've been looking at? Because this is a player who seems to play best when he plays as an offensive midfielder or plays as a second striker. Well, plays. Moino has said his main target is Rooney. And until, until Rooney comes, he's looking at getting other targets. But his main... So, you'd reckon if he gets William, the Rooney deal is dead? I'm not even sure if the Rooney, Rooney deal, he's actually being serious the whole time. Because, like, you know, yeah. Mourinho likes to play, like, mind yeah. games and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's just trying to unsettle United with a lot of part of it. So, they've already had two bids rejected for him. So, I'm not too sure what his uh, intentions are. Yeah. But, mind you, mind you were very fluid last week. Four goals against Swansea. Man, man United usually don't start that well. In the, in the, and to have even Wilbeck, who the whole of last season scored, scored one season, just, uh, one league goal, and then now scores in the first. And it was goal, a great goal as well. A very good goal. Great so goal. He, two very good goals. So mm. it just goes to show that perhaps um, um, the, 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 the machinery is, is still in, in progress. Um, Moist might not have to do much anyway. Okay, so that's the English Premiership. Let me just update you on what's been happening elsewhere. In League One, Monaco were brought down to earth. Remember, they won their first two games. Well, they dropped their first points as we're held to a goal restaurant game by Toulouse. So surprise, surprise, surprise. The high-flying, high-spending Monaco have finally have, had brakes put in their wheels. They drop points. It means they now have seven points. They are just a point ahead of Marseille and Lyon. Lyon will be playing over the weekend. Marseille will also be playing. And then Saint Etienne, they all have six points. And on Saturday, which is today, Lyon will host Star Dreams. Marseille travel to Valencia. And then Saint Etienne will play against Lille tomorrow. In the Bundesliga yesterday, well, Dortmund put pressure on Bayern Munich. They won their third game on Friday, thanks to Robert Lewandowski's game. Now, you know Robert Lewandowski wanted to go to Bayern Munich. What's happened is that he's now decided to stay. They've given him a generous rise in salary. The players, the money always does a trick, doesn't it? It does. Uh, it governs everything. Look at Monaco. They've got a very, very small stadium, not a huge fan base, and they're attracting huge players. Yeah. So it, it definitely governs a big part of the game. The players will always tell you, we like the project, but indeed, they also like the money that comes with it, especially well, the in the municipality. Money makes the project sound. <laughs> money, money, money is the integral part of Especially the in the municipality of Monaco, where you don't have the tax deductions that players usually have in France. So, Dutchman have won today. Treble winners by Munich on six points to host... Nuremberg. It's the Bavarian Derby and it will be taking place today. And the history is that Dutchmen, when they have won their first three games in the Bundesliga season, have a way of going on to win the title. It happened in 1994-95 season. It happened in the 2001-2002 season. So for those who predict the game based on stats, it probably means that Dutchmen will give Bayern Munich problems this season. In La Liga, Athletic Bilbao won by two goals to nil yesterday against Osasuna. Because their stadium is under construction, they had to play in Anoete, which is the stadium for Real Sociedad, and they still won by two goals to nil against Osasuna. For the other matches coming up, on Monday night, you have Granada hosting Real Madrid. You have Barcelona playing against Malaga. That game is coming up today. And then we have Sevilla playing against Levante. So those are some of the games coming up in La Liga. Okay, so you didn't predict, though, Chelsea against my United yeah. on Monday night? Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea for you. Uh, United, United, <laughs> well, it's a similar um, a fixture that made Moreno leave England. You, mm -hmm. you remember early, mm -hmm. early on, Chelsea, Man United, Moreno left. But this time he will leave England even if he he, He's not going to leave. Even, even if Man you beat, beat Chelsea, I'm sure. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I'm going for my break. When I come back, I'll talk to um, Simon Peter McIntosh, the boxer, and the winner of the freestyle football competition, which took place here in Ghana. He's going to represent Ghana at the world event. This is the game on GH1. Keep your opinions coming. To the game here on GH1, we have uh, some time still to go, and we are going to talk still football, but a different kind of football. Some go onto the field and they show their skills and try to put the ball in the net. Well, some just look at how they can do moves with the ball and do juggling with the ball, and that's what we are going to talk about next. Before then, let me just clear some of your tweets concerning the Black Stars and the return of the four. Sule on this very grounds, um, although he played Ghana's last qualifier. Um, here are some of what you have been saying. Nusito Savia on Twitter says that mine is with Jordan. We seem to be laying him aside as though we don't care. He's young and Ghana may live to regret if he gets better later. And this is from that naughty boy on Twitter who says that, um, 
Well, you are you are predicting that Man United will win by two goals to nil. Okay. Kwame Boatin says K P Boatin and the DRU, not forgetting Jordan and Montari, are really good. And I think they really need to give us the necessary help. Mauli K says, if you can remember the celebration dance of the two, and he means Sule Montari and then Kevin Prince Boatin in the defeat of Barcelona, it shows someone whose heart is still for Ghana. Okay. So those are some of your comments. Keep it coming. And I'll be reading them before the end of the show. Now it's time to switch to freestyle football. And on the 16th of this month, there was a competition to decide who was the best freestyle footballer in Ghana, somebody who could juggle the ball best here in Ghana. And that winner was going to represent Ghana at the World Championships. And we did find that winner. And that winner has joined me here. Hey, you're welcome to the game on GH1. Thanks. So it's the, the, sh the program was the Red Bull Street Style, street style yeah. Freestyle Football yeah. Competition. And you were the winner. Congratulations. Thanks. What's the name again? Joel Asari. Joel Asari, from yeah. where? From Teshi. Teshi. Were you in last year's competition? No, I wasn't. You, so I how heard, did you hear I heard, about this? I heard of it later. A wow. competitor told me about it. And you won that trophy? Yeah. So how long did you have to train for this? Um, I took about a year to train, regular training. Wow. Do you play football? I used to, but I ceased. You ceased playing football. Which level did you play football to? Just goals level. Just goals level. So here are highlights of the finals of the competition and what the players had to do to win. So what kind of player were you? I, I want to know how you got into freestyling. What kind of player? Were you a, a skillful player? Yes. Um, I, I um, normally played in the midfield. In the midfield. Yeah. That's six. Six. Yeah. yeah. But I thought um, I could be better at freestyling. Is that why you quit playing football? Yes. You don't have any ambitions of playing football to the very top. No, I don't. But how far can freestyle football then take you? Um, to the top, very far, yeah. Because I believe um, that's my sound of um, when I, I was playing football. Okay, so you are the competition. Who is this guy? Um, Sian Anogdani. Who is he? The 2008 Red Freestyle Champion. So he is the world champion? Yes. And you've seen the daredevil stuff that he's capable of doing. Yes. Do you reckon you can match it? Uh, yeah, I can. Is this you? Yeah. Wow, okay. So this is you. Yes. And how do you come up with these moves that you do? I watch videos from YouTube of professional freestyling outside Europe and inside Europe. And I get wow. some of their videos on YouTube. And I how... How easy is it to master these moves? How long do you work on a particular move before you master it? Determination matters a lot. When you are very determined, you can um, do any trick. You, uh, any trick you are given, you can master it. That hmm. if you train regularly, yeah, that will help you a lot. So where do you train at home? Um, yes, home. Sometimes inside uh, my room or sometimes on the pitch. Yeah. Wow. What else do you do? Do you school? I'm a graduate student. Okay. Yeah. You finished with school? Um, Teshi Presbyterian Secondary School. You finished Teshi Presby. So it means you have a lot of time on your hand. Yes, sir. You are going to represent Ghana at the World Championships. Do you have what it takes? We saw another winner from last year. He went and when I interviewed him, he said he saw what those guys were capable of doing. It was another level. It was crazy. How well do you reckon you do? Um, I started training on those tricks that they can use in winning the tournament. And I'm I'm very sure I can get into the top 16. Top 16, yes. so quarterfinal stage. Yeah. But it all depends on who you meet on the way. Yes. And if in the training too. Okay. I train a lot, morning, afternoon, evening, because I'm very determined to get to the top. So this is like your objective now. Yeah. You really just want to go to this world, world yes. championships, yes. and then do well. Yes. And when, assuming you go and you excel and you come back, then what next for you? Um, I'll get more into it. I won't stop training. I'll, I'll get more into it, like train children to also get to mm. the top, like how I'm. How tough was the competition here in Ghana? Um, it was very tough because this year, it seems the level was above expectations as compared to last year. Um, last year, it was like all the guys were doing a one-way style. But this year, they watched ahead and they watched videos on YouTube and all. They got more experience as compared to last year. And um, my toughest um, battle was the one against the recent champion. Yeah. That's the former champion. You met right. him at our stage? 
um, in the finals. Wow. How did you beat him? Um, well, he was good. He's always been good. But it seems um, I, I got ahead of him. That's through the tricks. Yeah. And he also dropped most of his balls as compared to mine. When you drop the ball, yes, it counts you down. It counts you down. Yeah. Okay. So um, we wish you all the best Thanks. at the World Championships. When are you leaving? Um, next year. Uh, next month. Sorry. Next month? Yeah. Um, oh, that is September. September. When, where is it taking place? Um, Tokyo, Japan. Wow. So you are going to Tokyo? Yeah. Wow. You are going to meet Chinese Kung Fu footballers <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. who can do crazy things with the ball. Yes. But you are, you are, you are sure you sure do well against them. Yes. We wish you all the best. Thanks. Sir. Okay, so he's the Ghanaian champion. They do crazy things with their ball. So this, this is him. Last year's champion. This is last year's champion. Yeah. This is the guy you faced. The final battle. This is the final battle. Wow, okay. So I interviewed him early on in the month when he, he came the defending champion. So he meant to carry his crown, but anyway, as he said, he dropped the ball a number of yeah. times. So thank you very much. You're welcome. So, um... There you have it. I will go for my final break at this stage. When I come back, Simon Peter McIntosh, the boxer here on the game here on GH1. Stay tuned. Final leg of the program, just to close the football chapter. Eric Yeboah on Twitter says that Muntari is the one needed, not the trio. Chelsea are going to win by three goals to no. Monday, three goals to no against my United. Well, that's your prediction. I'm ending the show. Um, I'm joined by Simon Peter McIntosh. Hi. Yeah. Nice. For those who don't know you, tell, you about, uh, tell, tell, tell us about you. Simon Peter McIntosh is a, is a boxer. He's 53 years now. You say you haven't retired. I introduce you as a retired boxer. No, I'm not retired. I'm still in the ring, my lord. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah. So, for those who don't know Simon Peter McIntosh, who is for, Simon Peter McIntosh? For those who don't know Simon Peter McIntosh, I doubt if enough, enough, enough people knows who this Rastaman boxer is. Actually, I said the first Rastaman boxing champion in Africa. You know, in my early days in boxing, they used to call me Obele Anazo, and that's why when Ghanaian boxing fans, hard one, knew who this Rastaman is. <laughs> Eventually, an incident happened along the way in 1987 when I defeated the former world number one contender, Obisi Wampa of Nigeria, we all know him. And at the end of the fight, after beating world number one contender, I was suspended and banned from boxing. Why were you suspended? And I asked a, a, a committee, Nigeria Boxing Board of Contrast to set up a, a disciplinary committee and call me and then ask me a question that, buff, that made me run away from my hmm. country. You came that to Ghana. nationalized as a Ghanaian. Why did you come to Ghana in 83? Thank you, 87, not 87. 83. Mm. When this committee is set up and they come and they now ask me, Obele Anazo, why is it that every time you are fighting the Igbos, uh, my, my local tribe, I was shouting Obunigwe, Obunigwe, and I cannot stop them. Don't you know Obunigwe language is an outlaw language in this country for this? We don't want to see him boxing any longer. And I was just crying. I couldn't believe that's the end of my boxing career. And where I was crying, the current chairman of the Nigerian Boxing Board of Control, it's, it's called Godwin, God, Dr. Godwin Kano, came to me and said, Obele Anazo, why are you crying? Go and tell this boy you know more answering Obele Anazo. Let them know that your English name, Peter McIntosh, you should use it, and I'll be there to support you. And I went, cleaning my tears, and said, from today, don't call me Obele, call me Peter McIntosh. Every oh! so, so you came to Ghana. Let's talk about coming to Ghana. And I'm looking at your record. There are people you have fought. You fought Aikote in 89. Yes, exactly. And, and, and according to the record? According to the record, Aikote could not defeat Peter Martin. You were disqualified. It's because you were disqualified. I wasn't disqualified. No, you were disqualified. He rather was disqualified. No, you were disqualified. No. Because it's recorded Aikote as a loss on your record. disqualified. You understand? Mm. What actually happened, I was then training among the Black Bombers in Accra Sports Stadium. And I was told, I caught it, don't like taking punch on the tummy. Now, round one, I was going to his tummy. Round two, I was going to his tummy. Round three, then round four, I got him. I got I got him. Mm. And then when I had him, uh, and I went in to finish him up, I put hand, carried me up, threw me on the ground. And then Andrew Smart now come to separate him from, then he pushed Andrew Smart, the referee, away. And then pop, start pummeling me on the ground. This is how... I caught it went on. The to fight become... was eventually stopped and the fight was 
the Ghana Boxing Authority now declared the fight official result no contest. Well, on the record, at least, they say it's disqualification if, against you. Yeah, no, 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 not against me, my lord. Try to understand. I think you have to verify your You, your you also report. fought against um, Emmanuel Clot, Joseph's brother. Emmanuel Clot in 1996. Exactly. A Johnny fighter. I was on my way to Cote d'Ivoire to answer Ufibu and his call when I had a fight happening in Ghana and I came to the world. Oh, Makinto, can you fight? I wasn't ready for Joshua Clotty, uh, Emmanuel Clotty. I wasn't ready for him that, that night. But I was going into the fight with the money. And it, it was a shame. You know, you, I look at your fight record, 18 losses. And there are those who say that way too many losses during your boxing career. Why? Actually, you know, injury. I'm glad it's happening to even footballers. Uh, now it's happening to look at, for instance, Michael Esse, my good friend. I used to train with Michael Esse so long at the beach then. You see, he, he's prone injuries. Why I'm injured, a promoter wants McIntosh just because they know. So why did you accept the fight if you knew well, you were injured? What can I do? I'm trying to appease my boxing fans. <laughs> I'm just trying to appease them. I'm trying, they want to see me. You know what I'm saying now? Ghanaian boxing fans have to be in for another McIntosh. So that's it. Bef before we go to the fact that you still haven't retired at the age of 53, let me ask you, in your opinion, how do you read the standard of Ghanaian boxers now? You, you fought in the 80s against people like Aikote. You fought in the 90s. You fought in the early 2000s. We are in 2013 now. How do you rank the current Frank, breed of boxers? Frankly speaking, I can, I, I can, I can, I think I can, I can, I think I can expose it. Yes. What I mean expose, it could have happened before I said it. But I tell Ghanaian boxing fans, we are having about six seven world champions. You mean potential among, world champions? Potential world champions among the current crops of Ghanaian professional boxers. Who are, who are these boxers? For in instance, Ghana? Basi Sami and his brother Issa Sami yeah. are potential world champions. Luckily to me, Basi Sami is a sparring partner to Floyd Mayweather today. Yeah. And he's proving Mark into a yes, you're right to beat me. We have one Duke Mike who is another flamboyant fighter, another potential world champion. We have one Mayo Planch this Mayo Planch is he's a magician. I've seen him. He's a bantamweight fighter. Thank you. We have one Ernesto Musu. I mean, as a Musu record now, 20 fights. We just one loss. You know, it's another potential. I mean, I mean we, we, we have... How do you compare the current guys to the guys from the late 80s and the 90s? I think the, 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 the margin is so wide. The current crops of Ghanaian professional bosses, should I say West Africa, uh, we, we are the, the best. Don't think of them of the 80s and 70s. No. Hmm. We, we've gone... We, you you train in the same gym as Game Boy. He recently went for a world championship. Yes. He won the fight, but there were issues about his weight. Frankly speaking, Game Boy is a, and, and his coach, specifically his coach, Coach Akese, is a disappointment to Ghanaian boxing why, fans. Why do you say Very that? Very big disappointment. Because why they were training in my gym, I noticed some flaws. And he disciplined me, and I called the coach. The coach now told me, McIntosh, stop disturbing me. You are doing the same thing. And I said, no, you can't say I'm doing the same thing. This boy is not a super featherweight fighter. Whoever look, Game Boy, we know he's natural, super lightweight. That's my class, where I belong. That's where his class belongs, super lightweight. I tried to put pressure on Coach Akese to give this boy an opportunity to further his weight. But the coach couldn't snub my advice. And what's going on today, all what we're seeing today is like things McIntyre have seen long and cried. You're saying he, he and, has disciplinary issues? He, yeah, because when, when a boss cannot maintain his class, his weight, I started my boxing career as a bantamweight fighter. I was the first super bantamweight people that create African championship here in Africa, in Nairobi, 1984. Okay? Now, Weight making is the worst crime you commit against a boxer. This is what Coach Akese is committing against his own son, Emanuel Tego. Okay. So, so yeah. finally, you are 53. I thought you had retired. No, I just in can't retire. In December 2011, <laughs> at the age of 51, you stepped in the ring. But yeah. it was a first round knockout. So no, you are pretty it, much finished. It, frankly speaking, it's, it's something is going on in Ghana boxing, which we thought we should correct it before it's too late. What's that? And this is why when Ghanaian boxers go... go Travel abroad, they fuck up. What's that? The day this fight happened that I was stopping around one, the boy padded his hand. He did what? He padded his hand. 
You know, he parted. The, the same thing happened to Koto when he fought uh, Margarito Koto when they discovered this man. This is exactly what happened to Mark Intosh. And when I reported this incident, so you feel the guy he parted his hand. That's why come you are knocked this out in the exactly first round. Exactly what makes Mark so Intosh. So punch land me at the back of the head. <laughs> Mark Intosh was on the floor. And I, oh, what's going so on? Why don't you just retire? <laughs> No, my lord, I'm saying is that I just can't retire you're because 53 the point, for what actually out. happened, you know. No, you're 53. Yeah, you don't mean. <laughs> you don't mean we have a boxer like Bashali who is 57 <laughs> and he was still showing the world that Africa well, you we know, have got nothing. It was good having you, know? you here. You know, these days yeah. it's not just a... It's, it's not just about the boxing. He also plays the guitars. I'd like you to play something for us before we leave. Can you play something? Um, Playing guitar, you want me to play? Yeah, guitar? I want you to play something. That's <laughs> Simon Peter McIntosh, and I'm sure <laughs> a lot of you remember him for his many bouts here in Ghana, Rastafarian boxer in the ring. Uh, he's going to play something for us there in today's edition of the game here on GH1. It's all yours now. Mm. Well, okay, so thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of the game here on GH1. We are back again with the Monday night edition at 9 p.m. here on GH1. So thanks to my production team and have a wonderful weekend. Simon Peter Mackintosh for you.